Okay, so as I said, I'm Jamie, and my topic is um, simulation. So some of you, maybe all of you, I don't know, probably know what simulation is, but according to sources, it is a working representation of reality that may be an abstracted, simplified, or accelerated model of process. So in other words, it is imitating a real-life situation to teach a lesson. Okay, so now I will simulate using simulation. So if everyone could please stand up. We're going to play a game. You probably don't know how to play red light, green light. Okay, okay. but instead of me saying it, I made the stoplight, so I'll just point to what you should do. So I'll just start. You can just like come forward or something. <laughs> okay, so playing this game can teach students a simple yet very important lesson that you stop on red and go on green. So I mean this is something that I hope all of us know now and just don't even have to think about, but we still use it in our daily lives. So experts say that simulation can improve cognitive gain it can increase students' understanding of material. It also improves their attitude towards the material that's being taught. And it also makes material applicable to their daily lives. So simulation is proven to work at all ages, from preschoolers to adults. And it is also proven to be effective on both an individual and a group scale. OK, there are a lot of ways that you can incorporate simulation into your classroom. One is by playing games, such as red light, green light. Um, another one that's really fun that I actually did in my fifth grade classroom is to use classroom checkbooks. So what this is, is the students all get their own checkbook and then they can gain, they can earn money by doing well on assignments or doing different jobs in the classroom or just good behavior. But then they're also penalized for, or have to pay fines for poor behavior, missed assignments in the works. And then there's different incentives, so you can have like a little classroom store and sell things like pencils and notebooks and materials and stuff like that. And then like my favorite one that I always got to buy, or well I didn't always because it was like the big one that you had to save up for, was you could buy to sit next to your friend so you could like change the seating arrangement and get to sit next to one of your friends. So that was always really exciting. Um, so this can teach students about how to balance a checkbook, how to write checks, the importance of saving money, and just math skills. And then another really fun one that is an idea is to have student businesses. So the students can all come up with their own product and then they can promote it and market it and stuff. And then you can have a day where you have like other students or faculty or parents come in and I mean, depending on the scale you wanna do it at, you can use pretend money or real money and put it towards stuff. And then they can sell it. So then they can learn about like profit margin and how to run a business and stuff like that. So those are some fun ideas, and there's plenty more, too. You can be creative with it. So one example of simulation at work is when students were taught about disabilities so that it could increase the um, interaction among all children in the classroom, those with disabilities and those without. So what they did here was the students that were involved in this study were given a pretest to test their um, knowledge, um, understanding, and acceptance of students with disabilities or just disabilities in general. And then the students that participated were split into three groups. A simulation group, an information group, and a control group. So the simulation group was asked to uh, act with a disability for a certain amount of time, like a few hours or a day. So some were confined to wheelchairs for the day. Some had to act with a deafness or blindness or loss of like a dominant hand or a limb. Some just had to talk with people that were blind or deaf or learn about braille and sign language and just various things such as that. And the students were asked to keep a journal so that they could write down frustrations, responses, how other people reacted to them and get a better understanding for what it was actually like to have a disability. And then the information group was taught about these disabilities just with traditional lecture methods. And then the control group didn't get any information. The three groups of students then took a post-test to measure how they had changed and improved and stuff, and the simulation group proved to, they tested significantly higher in all of the areas of the study 
than the other groups. The traditional teaching method also had improvement, but it was still a significant difference between the two. So to wrap this up, um, simulation has been proven time and again to be more effective than traditional teaching methods. Um, it can improve cognitive progress and it increases students' interest in school and material that they're learning. Simulation teaches students how to apply what they learn in the classroom to their daily lives.